children. We are uh, getting started soon. There's, uh, you can hear them now. Hi, it's me, Mike Minotti. I'm here to say that partying till 11 is okay. Give your parents a text so they know you're okay. And drive home safely. Don't drink the night away. Damn bars. Yeah. Spitting. Fucking loser. Uh, <laughs> dialing, dialing, dialing. Oh, wait. It's to do with Diddy now. So can't oh, that. man. Oh, oh. Are you playing so much Dragon Dogs, man? I didn't even, like, do red manga. And... Oh, you two fight, oh, fight, shit. fight. One mod likes Dragon Dogma. <laughs> Other mod doesn't like Dragon Dogma. <laughs> Mortal Kombat. Oh, you haven't listened to the Bombcast yet. Okay. <laughs> Uh, uh, Mike, strongly don't Mike, like news. Mike, Mike, news. Go check yeah, the Nintendo face. YouTube channel. Fucking oh, shit, YouTube oh, shit, channel. oh, shit. Hang on. Okay, okay. Well, it's always a nightmare trying to find a channel on YouTube nowadays. No, I got it. No. This is just the one game. Oh, oh I'll take it, though. Yeah, yeah well. It's a good game, but, like, damn. <laughs> Let me check the uh, the Reddit. Is that the that's the first one, right? I can never remember. Maximum velocity. I think Maximum that's the first velocity? one. Maximum velocity. Yeah, I think that's yeah, the first one. Here's the tweet. Okay, I got it then. Oh no, yeah, hang yeah. on. The second video on the channel is more interesting. The second video. Yeah. yeah. Does it have furries? No. The Thousand Year Door trailer is running at 1080 60. And it is it. It, it better. Is just, it is, it is just a pre-rendered cutscene, but why would maybe. they do that if not? Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, mm. maybe. Maybe it annoys me. Could be. Like, everybody, be. like, defending Dragon's Dogma with fucking uh, running like shit. It annoys me the fuck out of me because, like, that game doesn't run well. What are you doing? Like, you can like the game and still, like, complain about the game. Because people don't like see shit. it, dude. You feel, okay. Some people just don't notice. They're like, oh, but you notice because the timing of the frames are horrible. Oh, yeah. Like, Frame I, feel it in your, I feel it in my gut whenever like I'm swinging my sword or something. Yeah, like, that. a lot of shit is going on. Turn the camera and like we're purchase. almost ready. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's like it, I can't like that's crazy. Like you're you're a dumbass. You're a fucking fucking. What are you doing? <laughs> I argue <laughs> with people because it's in, in a, yeah. You guys hear me? Well, yeah, back in the Stop day, saying. games used to run at 30 frames and nobody complains. Like, that's not true, motherfucker. Please yeah, they ran at 60 for... for... Games run at 60, motherfucker. What are you talking? Yeah. <laughs> oh. hey, well, not PS1. Most of those games were not 60. Stop. Bye-bye. PS2. Uh, the PS1, there was a lot yeah, of... Yeah, we have like two generations where shit didn't run at 60, hour. so that's our entire lives. Yeah, well, pretty much. Uh, you guys heard that but that time. I remember, like, there were no, games we in PS One that would let you like okay. turn off what shit, the so the game ran like sixty. Yeah, remember yeah. That? yeah. Let's feel oh, that's oh, that makes sense. That makes sense. There we go. A performance mod in fucking. Hey, you guys hear me? Stop hey, there it is. Oh, all right. Six. Is it the then... proper volume for the kids? At no, home? it is me, not, but see. it is now. There we go. Give me a second. I need to do something. Because your audio is weird for me. I'll put... I'm gonna bump you. Don't no, get excited. No, I'll put, yeah. Uh, Alright, let me tweet and then I think we'll be good. Mike, can you give me like a, a loud you? You? <laughs> yeah, yeah, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> That's... That yeah, was a loud you! you. No. That's a loud you. Can't deny that. Alright, test this. One, two, three. There we go. I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm good on my... Yeah. Uh, oh, we need to do the other stuff for the Patreon. Oh, yeah. Was it maybe Thursday? No, oh, no, no. Right. I'm not talking about Columbus. I'm talking about oh. other things. Maybe. Do we still need to Production. do that? Like, maybe Thursday? What was that, Mike? Yeah. Production we still... behind. Yeah, but do we still need to do Columbus on Thursday? Yes. Okay. I'm ready. Still a month behind. All right, let's go. Uh, I'll I'm tell not you, Fire here. Well, well, you're not? Wow. Fucking yeah, what do you what do you even have to do right do? now? Oh my god. Tweet? If I don't tweet, you yell at me. Fucking if fucker. I do tweet, you yell at me. I'm just doing just, one last thing and then I'm tweeting. I just a little I just wonder what the ten what the ten minutes of things he I mean I run this one. I don't understand what the ten minutes of things you have to do before it starts every time. Are. I'm not doing ten minutes of things. I it's been like five minutes since we started. Okay. All right, so, all right. I haven't yelled at you for a week. 
I know, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> 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 you guys need this, huh? All right. <laughs> He's in that uh, Cloud Tifa subreddit, Mike. He's getting real mad. Oh, he's he's Clarith and not Claudie. He's team Clarith. He's really mad. Bitch. Yeah, I love that person in the subreddit for people who really care about Cloud and uh, Tifa being together. It was like really brave. Like, does anybody else think that the Clarith people are fucking assholes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bet they do. Oh, All God. right. I am. I am good. Um... Are you? Well, yeah, I mean, now Mike's got me all like, now, like, did I do everything? But now I'm afraid of, I'm afraid to like check because then he's gonna get mad again. No, it's fine. Take your time, dude. It's all right, great. we we check the music. All right, listen to this hey, shit. Hey, you guys heard that? Me? Let me just yeah, go through the right bus, which I have to change. I have the right stuff up on OBS. It's right there. It's ready to record. Uh, it, the volume's right for you guys and for chat. Uh, I tweeted. I think we're good. All right. All right. Let's go. But what were you doing for ten minutes? That's real. Cool. I was jerking off. In five, <laughs> four, three. Hey, you guys hear me? Start cheering now. Yeah, yeah, let's get this over with. Yeah. Woof, woof. Hi, I'm McMinotti, and I am a Nintendo. Hi, I'm Jeff Grubb, and I am a Nintendog. And we are the last of the Nintendogs. Oh, Today, ruff, 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 we're ruff. back from PAX. Sue you, the Yuzu successor in trouble. And I'm, I'm mad about something. We'll get to that. Uh, so it's going to be a normal not episode. You. Not you. I'm not yeah, mad at you. Yeah, but Don't still, worry. yeah. Uh, by the way, can I borrow some money? Fuck no. Oh, okay. So I don't have uh, money. What are you talking about? <laughs> well, maybe you shouldn't have, like be going on a podcast about all this stuff. Uh, it's too much fun not Jeff. to talk about. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm doing good. I'm recovering from PAX slowly but surely. You know what? Not yeah. what? Not a lot of people talking about getting sick. That's pretty cool. I heard more from GDC than PAX, to be honest. Yeah, and, like, even, and even that was like a lot of people were like, I was expecting to get sick and I didn't. So it's like it didn't even hit mm -hmm. everyone at, at GDC that bad. I, but I uh, got a couple people from my staff. I had three. People on my staff that went to GDC, two of them got sick. There, oh, so okay. All right. Well, there it they've is. They've been really yeah. targeting the games beat people, I guess. They're going after them. Yeah. You guys have gotten away scot free for too long. Um, yeah. So, like, well, the, the, the giant bomb team was talking today. Like, everyone's feeling pretty good. So, that's good news. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. I feel like a little wiped out, just tired. Which oh, is yeah. Yeah. Too much after. traveling, not enough sleep, all that um, normal stuff. Yeah. Right. Especially like the last day, I had a late flight, so everybody else was gone. So I'm like, now I can do cultural stuff. So I just like went walking and like like every like ten minutes there was something close by, like real close to us. Our hotel was the Boston Tea Party Interactive Museum. Jeff, it was kind of like a play. Yeah. Like there were actors. Did you and, role um, play? I was very excited when I walked in. They like gave me a card that had my character on it. I was uh, Ebenezer Macintosh, the local shoemaker. Emac, you were you were Emac. I was Emac, yeah. And apparently, also uh, we stormed. I stormed Governor Hutchinson's uh, manor with my with my gang, and we ransacked that place. So I was a bit of a ruffian. Uh, but it was fun. Uh, we got to go on a recreation of one of the ships, and they had a bunch of like tea boxes tied to ropes. We could like throw the tea in, and then they would like bring it back up so somebody <laughs> else could throw it. But yeah, that was nice. Like, yeah, I was like, yeah, eat shit. Tea it was great. That sounds like fun. Did you enjoy yourself on that last day? Oh, yeah, it was great. So, like, after that, I, I just kind of went walking and I actually stumbled upon the Boston Massacre site that I kept talking about wanting to see. Uh, yeah, you love, you're a big, big massacre fan. Yeah, I wanted to really see where those people got fucking shot. Uh, <laughs> there was like a there was a Sam Adams Tap House that was you know whatever that was okay. And had a couple had a decent beer there and some not so decent food. Walked by the uh, Massachusetts State House and then with the Cheers, I did it. I found the Holy Land. Yeah, there it. there it is. Yeah, uh, how was Cheers? That's what I mean. So I think it's the one where like the out the the outside is what they actually filmed for the show. So inside right. it was just some old bar that they have now kind of decorated look like cheers but it's not the same layout right yeah yeah that's but right it, yep. it, it was still fun good, so it looked good, like cheers good. they had stupid pictures and everything up and i just got some like normie beer and sat at the bar and thought like i like cheers this is nice. yeah and, you know it's also nice to be surrounded only by tourists you know <laughs> just about, uh, i'm with my people so mad right now yeah right? yeah 
But uh, and then like uh, like well, a big park, the Boston Commons was right next to that. So I walked through it for a little bit. Then just uh, at that point, I was pretty far away from the hotel. So then I just took an Uber back and went to the airport. Did you do any birding? I thought about it when I was in that park, but like I wasn't really hearing very many yeah, interesting I, I, calls. There, there city weren't birds, there weren't many right? yeah there weren't many birds. I mean you know cities can have quite a few birds, but not when it was like frozen frozen for like five straight days in Boston, like it was for when we were there. So. I was like, what did we abandon the idea of going birding when we were realizing there just wasn't much out there right now? Right. That, that's right. So that was it. It was nice. You, I know you just left earlier. <clears throat> we were going to get lunch, but you just left. Yeah. yeah I, I, so I left my hotel room when everyone was leaving their hotel room at 11 when checkout was. So every the line was literally like 30 people long to check your bag at the hotel. And I just did not want to roll around with a bag in Boston from thing sure. to things. And and I didn't want to wait in that line. So I was like, I'll just go. You know what? I'm just going to go to the hotel and, or go to the, the, the airport, mind you. Uh, and I, uh, yeah, I just did that. And that was kind of annoying. I shouldn't have done that because it was like I didn't really want to sit around the hotel or the got the airport for, <laughs> for, for I don't know, for five hours. Um, yeah, but I took a nap. Have, uh, could have at least done the uh, Boston Tea Party thing. With I me. know. I, I didn't realize it was that close. So had it I known that, I would have done that. Close. That that I would have enjoyed. Right past that one brewery we went to, the uh, uh, Trillium. We went to a brewery called Trillium the first night. That right. Was nice. Oh, okay. I didn't know it was right yeah. there. Yeah. I um, I, I'm, uh, I you know read that Sam Adams book. I've watched that mini series like three times now with me, HBO One and I mean John Adams. John Adams. Thank you. Yes. Did. Yeah. John Adams. Yeah. And then uh, so it's like that stuff is still very interesting to me. Yeah. Yeah. I I really liked uh, like colonial history. I was really into it a few years ago. I think during the pandemic. That was one of my pandemic hobbies, right? So, uh, yeah, it was a good time. We had a great time at PAX, though. Lots of yeah. people uh, came up, said hello. A lot of people can see a chat right now. So thank you so much for saying hi. A lot of people came to our panels. A lot of people had very nice words to say. So it was all really appreciated. It was a great time. We had really the, the, pretty much the whole crew there. Um, Sean wasn't there, sadly. Uh, maybe next time. Uh, but, uh, you know, we, we had a lot of people there, no Bailey or anything, but yeah, a lot of people. Yeah. We did our, uh, our fun panels. Um, Dan Doko dare was a good time. Uh, you guys had that, that smoked your ass you guys had that head start. We almost came back. It was actually relatively close at the end compared like all things considered. It was uh, actually, uh, but yeah, in the individual well, games and stuff and the individual, individual challenges, you guys definitely smoked us cause uh, you had that double score. So you had more than twice the points that I had. And then. Uh, Lucy had, I don't think she has touched a Super Nintendo for shoot ever. And, uh, it felt like Bacalar had never touched an N64 for shoot. Right. <laughs> so. I was coaching Tam a lot through SNES. Oh, I was, was yes, I was coaching both of them. Uh, it was, it was stressful, but fun. I, I had less coaching I could do for N64, but, uh, and then uh, uh, Jay was driving me crazy on Pokemon Snap. I think he was only using the D-pad, so he was only turning the camera at 90 degree angles. <laughs> Finally, Tam, I think, went over and, like, just moved the analog stick to show him. Like, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, speaking of, this is what I'm mad about, Dan64, during the uh, bomb cast today, Dan Reichert, one Dan Reichert, who I thought had already exposed me to the worst of his opinions a long time oh, ago. They, they, it's an endless mine. He he thinks that the N64 is better than the Super Nintendo. Now, look, I know I'm a bit of a Nintendo 64 curmudgeon. You just want to do a, you that, want me to do a poll real quick just to help back you up here? Oh, please. Yeah. That's, that is actually insane. That, the, the, no. Gosh, there's like only 100 uh, N64 games like in North America. There are 100 good Super Nintendo games. It's insane. I get I, I get that he kind of like miss he, he's not a JRPG person, so he misses out on an entire pillar yeah. of like what makes a super Nintendo great. But even without that, even without that, like the third party support on Nintendo 64 with stuff like Mega Man X and Castlevania and uh you know Contra and all these other great, great games, and like Nintendo 64 just does not have very much of that. There's a Castlevania on N64. Yeah, great. There's, there's, a, them, there's yeah. a Mega Man on N64. Yeah, it's the worst version of the PS1 game. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's look, there's good Nintendo 64 games, of course. Yeah, uh, but Mike, you're, you're right. Uh, my my thing with this is I don't need to fight over my children. I, they're, they're, uh, I love them <clears> all, <throat> and I don't need <clears> to pick <throat> a favorite. But you're right. The Super Nintendo is better, better than the N64. It is. I mean, the Super Nintendo is better. 
than just about everything. <laughs> like it's just the yeah. best, one of the best systems ever made. Um, so yeah, I'm 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 with you, but I, I don't like. I don't. The N64 is getting kicked around enough these days. I don't like to pile in <laughs> on it all that much. That makes me feel bad. Guess the Tesla 64 is great if you like a lot of racing games, more racing games than you could ever possibly yeah, and, need. Yeah, and I'm like realizing uh, I I do like a lot of those racing games. Oh boy, they're, they're, that's a lot of fun. Um, I, I don't I'm know. jealous because you were playing that Top Racer collection. Yep. And I know you're. I never played Top Gear Rally on 64, but you're talking about that one. Yeah, too. Top Gear Rally. So was, I mean, I'm, I got that Midway VHS tape that we watched, where that, I, I'm pretty sure that's where I learned about that game. And then I think I either bought that game or rented it a bunch of times. I really enjoyed that. I just, I like the way racers look on N64. They are, like a rally game's a good fit because they are typically slower than PlayStation games um, in terms of like just, you know, frame rate and the way they, they feel. So a rally game was a good fit for that, where it doesn't have to go, you know, 300 miles per hour. Obviously, F-Zero X was able to make a game feel fast on the N64, but that was about the only one. I guess, but even then, it's like, ah, uh, you know, I'll, I'll take the PS1 racing games collectively over that, like just Ridge Racer and like Gran Turismo almost alone, right? You know, Mario Kart, I like Mario Kart 5, but it never like really gets me freaking yeah, super I, excited. And you, you got Crash on PS1 and Crash uh, yeah, some racing, actually fantastic. Uh, Beetle Adventure Racing for me is like the one that kind of like swings it back really hard. Beetle Adventure mm -hmm. Racing is actually a classic video game, like uh, beyond its genre. And I don't, I don't care about Gran Turismo, so that's that that doesn't move me that much. But whatever, I mean, that, that, I'm not saying that the, you know, those games aren't great for sure. The PlayStation had great racing games too. I get it. Uh, I just I like my N64. I will confront Dan about this tomorrow during uh, Super Dan 64. Sure, that seems uh, like a good idea. Yeah, yeah. I'll get into a fight with him, and I bet I bet I'll make him see the light. Yeah, I, I I think you could change him. Uh, we have to, if anything, we've learned that that's uh, no, something that's possible. Let's be clear. I will not. I still think in my heart of hearts, he knows he's wrong about the stupid Mario 3D world not being a mainline Mario yes. game or Wonder now, which is even more insane in some ways. Yeah, he does know he's uh, wrong. And yes, I, he uh, he. But he's doing the thing where he's like, if he never admits it, he never has to confront the fact that he's wrong. And I sure. I don't know if there's a way to get him over that hump ever. You almost had him because uh, you were on Fire Escape, and he was talking about how his dad is always like, oh, music today, like, you know, they play instruments, but that's not, like, real music. Like, and he's like, I don't want to be like my dad. You're like, yeah, just like how Mario games today aren't real Mario games. <laughs> yep. Barbara like, Strike. Oh, no. He couldn't handle that. Yep. It's, and that's exactly what he's doing. And he, he even, like, there was an episode where he came back, and he was like, I was at the store, and I was just, like, wondering, like, why does it matter if it's not a mainline Mario game? It's not a quality. Like he's like, I, I admit it's not a quality thing. So what is it? And I'm like, yeah, Dan, what is it? Explain why you need to, need to make a distinction. He still has never done that. No, like it's just the most. It's arbitrary, weird rules. Like, well, once it went 3D, you can't go back to 2D right. for a mainline game. Right, an insane game. thing. <laughs> right, and then even when like the one was still 3D, Super Mario 3D, where I was like, well, no, because that's a sequel to a portable game, so those automatically don't count. <laughs> yep. Why? Uh, anyways, <clears throat> man, I tell you, that's the one thing. My throat is a bit blasted. Yeah, I am. From I'm like, I, I, yeah, I was a lot of talking to friends. Uh, you know, our panels are one thing, but like going to the bar every night and talking really loud with drinking, which I'm pretty sure alcohol does a number on your throat anyhow. So like, oh, I, I mean, it's not exactly known for its lubricating effects. Exactly. Uh, uh, so I think combining those things, I'm like, man, my, uh, I was losing my voice by the end of the weekend for sure. I'm like, I need to like, I, I was talking to someone about speech therapy. I'm like, man, I might, I should just go in for that and see if there's some more stuff I could do to help like strengthen my voice. Since that's my entire career now is talking mm. into a microphone. Right. I should Bump probably our do voice and our, our faces, right? Exactly. Yeah, our beauty. Sure. Right. But that, the beauty is <laughs> going to take care of itself. So uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I think I am going to try to like get serious about taking care of myself for that stuff. And, uh, Talk to a doctor, or talk to a speech therapist, and see if I can do some practicing to, like, yeah, just be have some strength to be able to make it through a weekend where I am talking a lot. Or maybe just learn some practices to talk in a way where I'm not straining my voice so much that I am losing it. So, yeah, but um, my throat, it's getting better a little bit, but that's because I just did not talk to anybody on all, all of Sunday, basically. I went to the airport and was able to just shut the fuck up, and that was really nice. Uh, now chat's saying that I said I got my throat blasted at PAX. That's great. Um, yeah, what's wrong with that, everybody? Yeah, wow, a I bunch of some, judgmental people in chat. I bet some tea would help, but uh, I threw all of it in the harbor. <laughs> <laughs> so. Jeff, well, let's talk about some uh, some news stories here. So how's that sound? Yeah, sounds great to me. Let's do it. 
So Suyu, which is the uh, successor to the Nintendo Switch emulator Yuzu that Nintendo uh, got destroyed, um, it, it has now been removed from GetLab, which is sort of the main place where people can kind of download these things, create branches, and add to blah, blah, blah. Um, so it's not there anymore. Now, Suyu does live on in some more private areas, but it's off that main platform. So a pretty big blow to that. What do you think the future of Suyu right now is or how much do you, how, how 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 much of a thing is suyu is it like really immediately picking up that mantle of yuzu I, you probably it, find this better than me i mean it, it, the thing is it could be the one that picks up that mantle uh and if it's not something else likely will um a different fork of yuzu um but but we're, we are going to be in this transition period where it's like they are going to have to find a home that will like house them and that's the problem with suyu it doesn't seem like this is necessarily Nintendo's lawyers going after Suyu. This seems more like GitLab being aggressive about making sure that Nintendo doesn't come after them. They're like, Suyu was not sued. Suyu was not actually sued, yes. Uh, I think they are trying to protect themselves at GitLab, uh, and, and so they're being proactive. And that means not allowing something like that to be on their platform, which stinks. But that just means if Suyu is serious, if the people responsible for it are serious about keeping it around and working on it, they'll just have to work a little bit harder to find some home for it. And that might mean some you know, run down website that isn't as great for hosting code and, and, and stuff like that, but that, that they might have to settle for something like that. And they probably will find something. Um, and, and then it'll probably just keep, it probably will continue. And then I think Sue, you probably will be the one that picks up the mantle and carries it. Um, and I, I, I hope it does. I hope that's the way it works out here. Nintendo has succeeded at their goal of, of just creating a chilling effect on the entire space um these these uh you know even sue you the one that's like got the name where it's like in your face sue you sue me yeah. sue everybody uh they're not like they don't have a patreon they did paint a target on their back didn't they right they, with the name for sure but they don't they're not painting a target on their back with a patreon they're not sure. painting a target on their back by telling people how to get copyrighted materials so those are the things that like nintendo can wield against these companies and or against, yeah against these organizations and they're not doing that they are just like, no, we, we're going to do the thing that has been previously enshrined as legal, which is to build an in emulator and distribute on the Internet. Uh, and technically, really, those things selling an emulator has also been protected. But these companies are like being extra careful. So, yeah, I, I, I think Sue, you can survive. I, it's just it's going to look like this for a while where they are going to run afoul, not necessarily of Nintendo, but of other entities that are afraid of Nintendo. And yeah, I think that's uh, I think that's right. I think you said everything uh, right there. We're going to talk a bit more about emulators later on the show. Yep. Everybody, look out! We're going we're going to the Astro community, their favorite Nintendo emulator memories. This is this is uh, we're we're rattling the cages from within the Nintendo <laughs> Geo today, Jeff. But I want to move on to something that maybe is Nintendo related, maybe not. We'll see. Uh, but you know, there's there's been rumblings about a Final Fantasy IX remake for quite some time. It was in that Nvidia leak where pretty much everything else in it has happened. It has come true during PAX at the Final Fantasy XIV Dawn Trail panel, which I was at. Um, Yoshi P, the producer of the game, was showing up some of the pre-order bonuses for the title. It includes a lot of things that are references to Final Fantasy IX, and we've already been seeing other references to Final Fantasy IX in this expansion. The new class is uh, the, the the Viper, kind of looks like what Zidane does with his tool daggers that can be kind of a single dual stick thingy. Um, there's a place, uh, there's a lot of like names being brought back from Final Fantasy IX. There's a similar thing that happened with the last expansion and what were Final Fantasy IV references. So at first I was like, yeah, they're just referencing Final Fantasy IX the most in this one. But um, during the panel, Yoshi P said, there's a there's a reason why we're referencing Final Fantasy IX so much, but I can't say yet. And at the time, that comment actually kind of went over my head a little bit. Sure. Uh, I thought it was like just some story reason for the game. But everyone says, but then other people are like, oh, maybe that Final Fantasy IX remake is very real and happening soon. Well, OK, well, let's uh, stop. What do you okay. think? What are the chances that you're right and everyone else is wrong? Like, Because <laughs> I because Mike, I'll say that's the first thought that occurred to me as well, is that. Oh, he's probably probably just talking about there's some secret connection to Final Fantasy IX in the story, um, and then I remember the, I, the leak I, as well. Sorry, I am a I'm a I'm a fucking nut for Final Fantasy XIV, and I also thought that but that it was oh this is they just don't want to spoil the story on Final Fantasy XIV, like whatever the story around that is 
Yeah, I never thought about like, oh, yeah. are we making Final Fantasy Nine, whatever. So yeah, it's a little. <sighs> It could very easily be that, but also, like, I, I don't know, like, what would the secret be? Because it's not like if Final Fantasy 14 and Walker, which was all Final Fantasy 4 stuff, like, it was just like, yeah, this one's representing Final Fantasy 4 a lot. They never had to be like, there's a secret reason. It's right. not really a secret reason. It's just what it was. It's just a lot of references. But Yoshi P could just be being cute here. I don't know. Uh, but look, I mean, that NVIDIA leak, everything else on it has happened. We know how much people... Love Final Fantasy IX. It is a game that has grown and grown in popularity since at first being kind of underappreciated because it was announced the same day as Final Fantasy X and XI. Final Fantasy X was like the big early PS2 game. XI was the MMO. And IX was going to be a late PS1 game. And everybody, of course, was way more excited for the other two at the time. Eventually, everybody kind of caught up. Everybody's played IX. It's regarded as maybe the best in the series. It's definitely my favorite of the single player games. I think Square Enix knows that. And I think they see an opportunity to do a remake, probably not like Final Fantasy VII, no. where it's like really reinventing what that game is and expanding it into three games. Uh, I think Sean said this on, on uh, uh, Bombcast, probably something more like re- Final, uh, Persona 3 Reload, where we're getting better graphics. We're going to get some things expanded upon because there were sort of, uh, especially for like party members, maybe there could be more growth there. There are things that you can do with a more traditional remake and i think that's what makes sense but i don't know jeff what do you think's happening yeah i I, no i think that i think they're remaking final fantasy 9 i don't think that's some big leap um based on the nvidia leak but it's something something i've heard previously which i forgot about until i read read a quote of myself in a vgc story and i'm like oh yeah that did happen um so yeah it's it they're making that uh, what does it look like? I, I don't know. Persona 3 Reloaded probably is the right sort of a poll because I was I was originally thinking it'd be like Crisis Core uh, where they replace all the graphics, but it's I think it's pretty much still the same game underneath. Otherwise, maybe there were some other changes. It, w- it would be more than that. It would be more than that. Exactly. That's where that's what I'm getting at is it would be more than just replacing all the graphics. They will do that, but then I think there'll be some extra stuff on top to make it feel like a modern game. Um, again, not Final Fantasy VII. That is its own thing. Um, but you know, maybe something you know pretty close to like Resident Evil Two. Uh, yeah, I, that wouldn't be too shocking, I don't think, because uh, I, I think that um, a lot of Japanese publishers are are looking at Capcom as the blueprint. Uh, the, it is the fat. I last time I checked, it was the fastest growing non Nintendo uh, Japanese video game publisher. Um, and I think a lot of these companies are like, man, why why don't we do things like them? So them taking nine and kind of doing the, taking that model and doing that, I could see that happening. I did, uh, as a side uh, thing here, just now finally get my order in for the Final Fantasy XIV Dawn Trail uh, Collector's Edition. The site was quite overloaded for a while today. Um, yeah, well, I guess I'll wait and see. Uh, I bet it is going to happen at some point, maybe sooner, maybe later. But either way, even if these are just references for the sake of references, you know, as much as I love um, Endwalker, I've said this before, Final Fantasy IV, not, I, I like Final Fantasy IV. I played it again not too long ago. With the pixel remaster and really enjoyed it not my favorite it's not one that really like st- like stays with me right Final fantasy 9 stayed with me so uh you know even if it is just hey here's a little zidane minion that follows you around we're gonna remix some songs from that game in this uh that's gonna make me plenty happy yeah and i mean if it's not on switch they would probably i think they would probably put a nine remake out on switch 2 because that seems like a much better fit for the nintendo audience than right. any other audience right like the, the, absolutely that's kind of like yeah the nintendo angle here is if this happens i kind of hope it isn't just uh, another like playstation exclusive uh, i hope that this comes to uh, a bunch of platforms and then is is that us all caught up on the nvidia leak except for final fantasy tactics i, I think so i think yeah, that's pretty, pretty, much, much. pretty much it yep and I'm not sure where that is. Uh, I imagine that is also still coming at some point. I think but, so. But, you know, we've, we've already had a pretty major Final Fantasy release with uh, Rebirth. Uh, of course, they want to probably space these things out. Uh, that makes plenty of sense. You know, last year we had 16, and we also have a 14 expansion this year. So these things might still be a little bits away. Right, but they are Final Fantasy heavy right now over at Square Enix, which I suppose oh, makes sure. sense because when they've tried to like do uh, various day life and other stuff in the last f- couple of years. It hasn't worked out great. Yeah. You know, they're doing like they're, they're making the first new mana game or mana game. Right. Yeah. Lately. I think that, I think that can work, but like, you know, the, the deal field chronicles is what I'm talking about. Well, sure. Sure. But you know, like, you know, 
I, I guess I'm glad I, they, I'm glad they took a swing with DFL Chronicles. But. Sure, I I thought that game was pretty decent from what I played of it. Do uh, we have the results the of the remnant? of the poll, by the way? What was that Christian? What if they bring back the last remnant? No. <laughs> that, the, the results of the poll, by the way, <laughs> Super Nintendo is 69 percent. Nice, Nintendo 64. With 30%. I do need to play Last Remnant. Is Last Remnant the one that, that I got on Steam, Christian? The it's, one that you always talk like about? Most... No, no, no. It, That's no. a uh, fucking... Uh, what's, whatever, it's other game. They already remastered Last Remnant anyways. And, uh, and you know, it was, it was, let's be honest. What did you bring it up for? I was just joking. Yeah, I'll kill you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> people like Last Remnant. All right. Uh, anyways, I was right. The poll validated me. Last thing here, Jeff, again, not something we might have to stretch you with the big about Nintendo, but Larian wants to do something new. They do not want to make more Dungeons and Dragons. They don't want to make more Boulder's Gate. Uh, and despite they what they're sure. saying, they don't want to work with Wizards of the Coast. <laughs> like, come on. Yeah. Like, they don't have to. I know that they want to act like all things are, are, are great there. But no, they don't want to work with Wizards of the Coast anymore. So yeah, uh, this is this is fun. I'm I'm glad that they're going to like take this opportunity where they could do whatever whatever they want to do whatever they want. That is a really good thing. Now, when they say something new, does that mean they're also not doing something with Divinity? I think so. Yeah, because I mean that's that's the right call here. I think a um a Divinity Original Sin three can be something that happens much later. Um, but I I think for now you take another stab at something that is maybe a little bit more different, a, a little bit more ambitious, uh, but also new so everyone feels like they can get in on the ground floor uh, because they're excited to play the next new Larian game. Um, I, I, yeah, I think that's the right choice right now. I, I think that's pretty cool. I Now, I think we both think it's still going to be like a turn-based RPG in that computer RPG style. Well, I mean, so Sven Vinke, the, the CEO, has talked about like their ambitions for this idea of a, a computer RPG uh, you know, they are far away from what he wants to make. He says, we're not there with technology yet, so we're going to keep moving in that direction. So I think that, to me, that means continuing to move in that direction and that these games build on what they've done before, but get more ambitious, more ambitious. It's like, we're basically at least two full games away from the third game possibly being what I want to make there. Um, so, yeah, I, my expectation is that they they make this next game in that same mold. And, you know, everyone, when, they, when they say something new, to me, I thought new IP, but people are like, oh, I mean, they're going to make work on something new for them. Like, what do you like? Do you think they're going to work on another license or somebody else's property? You think that they're going I mean, to spin up something entirely new here? I think they're probably going to make a new IP. I mean, why wouldn't they make That's a new IP I that they own? Yeah. I yeah. mean, they could, they could mean new for them. Sure. Absolutely. I think they mean new IP, something totally from the ground up, all them. Do you think it's still fi uh, fantasy? Or you think they're final? It, 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 if it's not fantasy, is it just sci-fi or something like actually different? I, I, if I were them, I would just be the fantasy computer RPG yeah, people. They're pretty good at it. Well, they're pretty good find at ways it. to make it more interesting. Yeah, but I, I mean, guess. fucking Sven Vinke shows up at the Game Awards wearing a suit of armor. That's just like who yeah. they are. Own it. Yeah, I agree. I think that's why I, I, I definitely I would rather they stick with fantasy than do the arbitrary. Here's our sci-fi one. Right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. They I, I kind of don't want that. No, thank you. I mean, I, of course, it would be great. And I like sci-fi, so I probably I will be eating my words. Uh, uh, but I think it makes sense for them to stick with with fantasy. Um, create a space in the market for someone else to do to be the sci-fi equivalent. That's whatever. Um, do you think do you think that when the switch Two launches, Baldur's Gate three will be on it within like the first year? If I was Nintendo, that would be something I would be really working on. Yeah, I would I even try to get to. Hey, nice catch! Thank you. There you go. Uh, he, he he hit a moth, everybody, with his hand. Uh, yeah. I get to Wait, some chopsticks. What do I do with moths, everybody? We we had moths on the ground. Well, I know, no, we had them last year. Up? They were in the house, and and then uh, you know, winter came. We didn't see them anymore. And if the second it got warm outside, I started seeing them again. Seeing them again. So is there like do mothballs work? Is that what I'm supposed to do? Like just throw those like in the corners of houses? I don't know. Get me on Twitter. Tell me. Yeah, no idea. Uh eat them. Yeah, Nintendo should one million percent be like working with them very digital diligently. Like, here's hey, here's a dev kit. Do you need any help? Huh? huh? We can get to we can get this working on here, right? Absolutely. We'll help you. We'll send people to you. Please, please, please. Yeah. And Larian did Divinity Original Sin 2 on Switch, right? Yes, that did happen eventually. That's yeah, right. So. so why not? Uh they should absolutely do that. Uh all right, Jeff, that's it for news. Why don't we take a little break here? We'll come back and read some super chats. Sounds good. Eat them all, Chef.
Do it. Put it in your mouth right yeah, now. I'll eat a moth. I mean, shit. Like that's his fiber, that's right? problem. Or yeah, like, yeah, lots of lots of protein and fiber, probably. Protein, yeah. Protein, yeah. I've seen snow piercer. Oh, I want, bro. <laughs> I'm just like, uh, how do you say, fantasy, fantasy. You're drafting? fantasy pilled. <laughs> yeah, fantasy, <laughs> fantasy drafting, like every IP I oh. like that I will like Larian to make a game. Fantasy out of booking. Or? Fantasy booking. There yeah, you go. There you go. There you go. Um. Hey, okay. Shogun, you, pretty good. X Men '97 oh. fucking owns. It is. Oh, I need to watch that. So good. Is is it like yeah. all out or is it a rollout thing? Oh uh, no, it's two episodes. Two episode premiere, and now we got to wait a week for every episode after that. Okay. But yeah. It, I'll, I'll, wait, I'll wait for it. You're right. Definitely. Yeah, I yeah, uh, yeah. X Men '97. Um. But uh, the the Magneto shit in the second episode, his speech, it's just he they He's so justified. Yes, he is. Justified. Yes, Steph was like, he looks like, like a drag queen. I'm like, yes, he does. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what's good another stuff. good show that I, I watched? No, we're not uh, talking about that. We're gonna get back to the podcast. Just say the show. I'm, right. I'm curious, and then we're gonna get back to the podcast. What is it, Christian? Uh, uh, three body problems for uh, I'll, right I'll check it out. I'm I've you know mixed things, but I'll I'm gonna see it for myself. All right, Mike, uh bring it back in whenever you're ready. All right. And we are back, Jeff. Would you please, please don't make me beg. Just read the super chats. Oh, but what if you did beg while well, I got them up and look? Okay. Uh, Mikey O'Leary says, can't make it live tonight, but wanted to say it was a pleasure meeting you at uh, meeting you boys at PAX. Mike, give that sweet little Sora a good home. I don't think, yeah. Look, uh, let me see, see. Can we see him? I don't know if I turn this. He's uh, somewhere up there next to my people mover. Somewhere yeah, you, you can see that red blob there. over there. There he is. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mikey. Thank you for uh, other people who gave me some Prezi, some Arcana packs. I appreciated all of it. Thank you so much. Yeah, it was awesome to meet you, Mikey. Uh, that was really, really cool. I was glad we were able to make that happen. Um, Kama Wood, it's the end of the Pen15 era. A true shame. I have not watched Pen15. Uh, but I, I smell spets a penis. Oh, shit. You just got it through on the chat. Good job, Connell Wood. Uh, yeah, Pin15, I've heard, is very, very good, but I've, I've never watched an episode. Big Jimbo Ryan, a parentheses, lost old account, sorry to break RP, uh, says, details on Ben's game. It is a Bubsy game. You make your own bu Bubsona. Cooperative mayhem. Think ultimate chicken horse and <laughs> little big planet, but online 3D platformer. Kojima involved, but will deny. <laughs> that's uh that's a little yeah that's what i expect from the next uh b b bin game of course it's bubsy yeah got a lot of weird stuff going on uh gosh ben uh, you see like phil spencer did an interview with gosh somebody it was kind of this uh it's kind of like another defeatist like interview in some ways what? i don't know maybe maybe not maybe that's me reading into it well i, I think it's because they're defeated <laughs> i mean like well yeah like that's <laughs> that's what happened like well, well yeah what do you expect him to say uh he did it with um with uh, uh our, our buddy chris uh over at polygon what's uh, mm. i'm trying to remember his last name now <laughs> i'm blanking sorry chris a caller uh, no uh, no definitely not <laughs> um i can't keep track of all these people sometimes yes. uh let's see here l grug says so how many chinese handhelds did jeff buy after Plant? he plant how do you no, ever, Chris Plant, Chris Plant, Chris Plant. That's right. Plant. I said I got it wrong both times. I was like plant. <laughs> plant. <laughs> Chris. Chris Plank. <laughs> constant. Chris, I'm Chris. I'm so sorry. Yeah, we're sorry, Chris. I I, I just blanked. Uh, so how many Chinese handhelds did Jeff buy after he used his degenerate powers on on the wholesome hobby that is gambling? Um, listen, I definitely considered getting another one, but I uh, I'm just gonna keep asking for those for free. And not spend my money on it. That seems like a much better idea. Yeah. Interesting that Jan got one. It was before I did. Well, you didn't listen. I didn't have you in the Secret Santa for the Giant Bomb Gift Exchange. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you got Lucy actually scared. I, I, I felt bad. I, I, had to, I had to break a break kayfabe to tell her no. I, this is just a joke. I'm so sorry. Uh, we did actually in a meeting bring up the possibility of doing a Secret Santa, and then I was like, the joke is just me and Jan get something. Um, all right, let's see here. The Uncharted Wolf. I'm allegedly hacking my 3DS, and that's ALLEGEDLY in all caps. Mm. And want to know any tips or things to remember? Programs to download and whatnot. I'm dumb with technology, BT dubs. Just, uh, just find the most popular YouTube video that tells you how to do it and do what it says. That's my advice. Don't, you don't even need the, the YouTube videos because those are going to be out, out of date. The thing that is ah, always up to date is. 
is it's 3dshacks.guide. Is that the website? I can never. 3ds.hacks.guide. Sean just uh, links to it. This, this is our super prison episode, everybody. Yeah, it was very fun to talk to people who uh, either worked at Nintendo or used to work at Nintendo. They were like, yeah, of course we know you. You're the people in Nintendo jail. Just saying Nintendo jail to my face. That's fun. Um, Incredible. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, 3ds.hacks.guide. Just follow that because when you're done, You'll be able to do whatever the fuck you want to that thing. You'll you can go to town yeah. on that bad. Boy. Or you could be like me and only put on the orchestrated music for Dragon Quest Eight and nothing else for for now. We'll get Mike into the illegal stuff eventually. Don't worry. So, uh, let's see. Nick Anderson says short and sweet. Go Caps. Uh, well, man, I haven't checked the score and I don't want to. That's a bad sign. Uh, and that's because that's their first super chat too. Thank you, Nick Anderson. Crouching Boomer, Hidden Zoomer, says Dan Riker is a Rube Goldberg machine of moving the goalposts. Yeah, listen, he's not as bad as some people. I'm uh, Every time I look on Twitter and see Gamergate 2, uh, they're the real champs of that. Uh, Dan is fine. He's a normal human being. Uh, Seraphis Kane says, I feel bad for the throat joke now, Mike. Sorry. Nah. Yeah, he should, uh, he, apology not accepted. Yeah, he was <laughs> no, the Na Nancy fine. Reagan of PAX East, everybody. Look out. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Connell Wood says, not the show, Pin15, is banned on Switch per... Oh. The word penis is banned on Switch. You can't say penis, Jeff. Oh, okay. Uh, wow, not the show. But what show were you even talking? Is there a show called Penis? There's a show called Pin15. Yeah. Yep. This is a sex show. It's a comedy show. I'm sure there are sexual about jokes. Sex. <laughs> about penises. Uh, it's, I bet most of the jokes are about vaginas, because it stars ladies. Uh, but they probably talk about penises. I'm sure they That's talk they about penises. That's what they do when they go to the bathroom uh -huh, They're talking about our penises they're and the sizes. They're talking about our penises, everybody. Uh, they were using the metric system, probably. Um, <laughs> pin 15 is banned on Switch per version 18. All right, then. Well, that's sad, but how, like, in just, what context? Just gong, like uh, the rest of us. Yeah. So it'd be funny if, if, if just... Is permitted on Nintendo? Yeah. Do they permit dong? Right. We were just at PAX. Remember, they used to say Wang a lot in Penny Arcade. Was Wang still a thing? That's a name. That'd be offensive if they banned that. Oh, uh, yeah, they can't do that. Yeah, we're good. Uh, that does it for the Super Chats, Mike. All right, fantastic, fantastic work, Jeff. Uh, thank you so much, everybody. If you want to send in any more Super Chats, we will read them before the end of the show. Let's take one more very quick break. We're going to come right back. We're going we're gonna to talk about our our favorite emulation memories. Look out. The warden, I think, is taking a smoke break. I think we got a little time here. <laughs> All right. All right, I'm going to right Oh, God, they're it. in overtime. All right. Let me just go back to it. All uh, right. Yeah, let me get away from this okay. this hockey game. Yeah, so I'm, so I'll be, I'll, I'll be, I did. I thought you were going to go away. All right. Okay, they cool. I thought I was going to go away. <laughs> yep, we're good. Right, so the last break was like 10 minutes ago. <laughs> The support of your green screen, it, it makes it look like you have horns, Jeff. Yeah. Just FYI. It looks cool. El Diablo. It, look like the like the lo uh, it looks more like the Loki horns. Sure. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> um, it's me. <clears throat> All right, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. And we're back, everybody. Jeff, Jeff, um, you know, I'll admit it. I've used, I've used some Nintendo emulators in the past. You got the nesticles? Yeah, that was actually when I was doing it way more was like oh, those, the old days, like um, like mid late two thousands, um, playing NES and SNES emulation, which was which was pretty good, pretty early on. Z SNES was a big one for me. Um, in fact, the first time I played Super Metroid, and this is kind of my memory, it was on an emulator. I did not have that cartridge. I didn't have it as a kid. That one was expensive pretty early on, even when like a lot of other Super Nintendo games were pretty cheap it wasn't a very easy thing to just go get a copy of super metroid i remember so the yeah the very first time i played through super metroid was on an emulator just on my computer uh and it was incredible i still remember that playthrough very vividly how much that game blew me away and uh you know all the ways i've played and bought that game legitimately since then the other one is actually chrono trigger very similar thing just not very easy to get a copy of chrono trigger it was actually before that ds re-release of it came out so my first time playing chrono trigger was just on an emulator on my computer and again it was a very special playthrough i remember it very 
vividly. So that's why I like two of these like juggernaut Super Nintendo games that I love and think about all the time. I actually did experience those on emulation originally. Yeah, I think um, I, d- I definitely did, was doing Nesticle. I was doing um, early Super Nintendo emulation and stuff like that. But, uh, it, it, you know, that was always um, going back and playing games I was either very familiar with or maybe messing around with a little bit with stuff. But I, I never liked playing stuff on the keyboard. And I wasn't finding a controller I liked to plug into the computer to actually play these games. Um, that would happen a little bit more frequently once I started uh, doing early N64 emulation, actually. Because uh, that actually got really good pretty quickly. And I think it was Project 64, something like that. It might have been something different back then. I can't keep track of it. Uh, but getting N64 emulation up and running was a, a, a lot of fun. And, and messing around with uh, Super Mario 64, uh, just playing it a bunch more on the PC, even though I played it a ton on the console, was always fun. And then um, the big memory that stands out is always trying to get Indiana Jones and the Infernal Machine to run, mm. and that taking years and years, and it never working right. It never working right because Factor Five does some crazy evil magic to their games, and you can never emulate their games properly. And then eventually, many many years later, that finally working and being very excited to play through a lot of that game and enjoying that. And then the other uh, fun memory for me was uh, a recent one: getting Virtual Boy running in an emulator inside the Oculus Rift or the Oculus uh, um, Quest. Two. Oh. Um, that was cool to be able to like just have the 3D virtual stuff right there in front of me. It's like the way Shigeru Miyamoto always intended, Gunplay mm-hmm. Yokoi always intended, um, and it actually worked really well in playing through basically the entire Virtual Boy li- library um, because those games, there's not a lot of them. There's like there's like ten of them basically. Let's see what our Discord community had to say about this one. Babatro said emulation helped me fall back in love with Pokemon. Between randomizers and ROM hacks, they both gave me new experiences and memories with one of my favorite franchises. So shout out to those communities. It does remind me, I remember downloading, and uh, there was already like a translation ROM. I don't know if it was completed, but it was at least for the start of Pokemon Gold and Silver before those games were out here. Because they were out in Japan like a, a good year or two before they came out over here. I remember downloading it and starting it and kind of like after a little being like, this isn't how I want to play this game. I'll wait, but it was wild. Like I could have. Mm-hmm. Dubino Crossy says, "Sup, dogs? I didn't play Ocarina of Time until 2019 via Citra. That's a, the 3DS emulator. Despite being a certified 90s kid, I think Water Temple gets way too much shade. I think yes, Water Temple at this point is like the product of overhype. Like that yeah. the point you get, especially in SJ, especially if you played that 3DS version where you can just push a button to equip and unequip those uh, metal boots or whatever." It's it's not that bad. Yeah, I I always thought that was that was overblown, and then every time I've gone back to it in whatever version I'm playing Ocarina of Time, I was like, I think I kind of like the Water Temple, uh, but I'm mm-hmm. a sicko. So, Casual says, seeing all the Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance box art in my Retroid Pocket Three when I booted it up for the first time was neat. It was fun when like uh the the UI started getting nicer for these things, right? Because for a while it was nothing but just you know opening files. Yep, and uh, you know that handheld I just gave to to Jan. I, I almost put on a new custom firmware on there because um, a custom OS because it's like you can do even more and the games run even better. Uh, but it's just the way it works right now. It lo- lo- looks so nice and professional. I really like that. Ali Maris Cerveza Cristal says Cerveza playing Cristal playing Kirby Air Ride City Trial and F Zero GX with online play in Dolphin the best. Oh yeah, and the best Star Fox on GameCube assault uh yeah the the online plays fun remember when we were doing online play online uh play of masters of terrace kasi the star wars funny game ps1 that was wild that, that was wild I mean, we did uh, online emulation of um uh, the four sword adventures uh yeah. think, which whatever. worked great until it didn't which worked great until it crashed once and then dan Riker was there <laughs> Dan fiasco uh oh, excuse me freedom McLiberty ball first oh that's easy i allegedly downloaded Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga is two weeks before her release. I was 12 and I didn't have money. That's <laughs> funny. Dan Fiasco says, I've been at this for a minute. I remember downloading and playing Dragon Ball Z Super Saiyan Densetsu for the SNES in 98 or 99. First time I played Chrono Trigger was via emulation my first year of college. Oh, just like me. But I'll just say that when I first got a Steam Deck, my immediate priority was getting WCW versus NWO Revenge up and running. Seeing that opening montage hit was just pure joy. That's what emulation is really for. Those incredible games that you're just never going to have an easy way to play uh, again. Um, yeah, 
it makes me wonder like just how many people like you know like when you like you know when you talk about like super metroid or some games people will be like well it only sold this many copies and it's like yeah way more people have actually played it than oh that. yeah uh, for sure some of these games are like emulation all timers like some go-to emulation games for sure right and you know other things too like nso and re-releases in so many ways that you uh, played real quick just to go back to freedom of liberty balls uh a, <laughs> sure, please yeah sure uh a, a personal lore of mine is um one of the reviews i did pretty early on i uh, illegally downloaded Batman Arkham Origins, uh, or not, not Arkham Origins, Batman, Batman Arkham Asylum, uh, and wrote a review about, about that because it was online like two weeks ahead of time. So I did that, and that's one, one of the reasons I got a job in this industry. So I'm trying to pay it forward there you go. by leaking their news, I guess. I don't know. Incredible. Yep. Joy Z says, the way our high school computer network was set up, we could bring in flash drives with GBA emulators and play Link Cable-style Advance Wars. Well, that's fun. Bradfish says, what about one console emulating another? Back in like 2003, I used an action replay to turn my Animal Crossing house into a little NES arcade, including all the games they had removed from base Animal Crossing, like Super Mario Bros. and Legend of Zelda. Those were great times. Yeah, even oh, yeah. Um, like, like we got pretty big with homebrew, but I remember even the original Xbox had some homebrew stuff going on. where We're putting emulators on and things like that. That worked pretty well. Yeah, I, I I forgot that people were doing that with the action replay. Of course, there were games included in the uh, in the GameCube one, uh, but yeah, the, the, with action replay, you could probably do a lot more. Octa says I had dual TGB set up, a Game Boy emulator that could run two games at the same time. I played Pokemon Crystal slash Yellow <laughs> and, one, and one small window on half the keyboard, and my BFF would play Yellow slash Crystal on the other half of the keyboard in a different window. Oh, while holding down the shift key to speed up emulation, we wouldn't exchange a word for hours. Good times. Hell that yeah. Special. That sounds like a good time. It put name here says playing the DJAP translation for Tales of Fantasia on the Z SNES uh, emulator. I feel uncomfortable saying yeah, that. Yeah, I, uh, I don't like though, that phrase. <laughs> <laughs> gave me a real warped view on what was allowed in Japanese culture before I found out years later the translator took certain liberties in localization. <laughs> wow, look at the screenshot. Mint has that quiet elegance about her. I bet Arch fucks like a tiger. Okay, then, Clarth Jesus. Are tigers known for especially aggressive uh, fucking? Well, you know, all the like those like sex perfumes are named after. Yeah, you know, listen, this is all entirely based on uh, Anchorman. Anchorman, yeah, it's about panther. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, what is it? Yeah, panther, sex panther, sex panther is about sure. sex panther. Yeah, it's a big cat. It's all around. It works every time yep. or whatever. Totally. Uh, B says setting up a GBA four iOS emulator on my uh, iPhone five S. <laughs> You're right. Uh, emulator on my iPhone 5 back in 2014. This is how I played my first Pokemon game, Pokemon Ruby, and instantly loved the games then. Now, I despise it for introducing me to Pokemon getting disappointed with every new release. Also, shout out to Wind Waker HD on Steam Deck. It was a great it's experience. really good. Yeah. Uh, I, I do remember getting uh, emulators on, like, some of my first smartphones. And then, like, after five minutes of, like, trying to use those stupid, like, translucent touch buttons, I was like, ah, that's enough of that. Yep, I, I don't really like that. There were some um, turn-based, I think I played a lot of, like, Final Fantasy Tactics Advance on early phone or whatever. Um, if it's turn-based, I could make it work a little bit, but I still hated using those. Uh, and then, like, there, were, there was always, like, oh, here's the dream of a uh, case that turns your iOS, uh, your iPhone, into a Game Boy or whatever. Right. It's the bottom half of a Game Boy, and even that, like, isn't great. Haas says, picked up the Steam Deck and not totally sold on it until I was playing Wario World on the train. What an emulating machine. Yeah, it's really great. Ben Chasey says, playing through Super Mario Thousand Year Door on my mom's MacBook when I was like 10 and getting a virus on it. Hell yeah. Let's oh, go. Oh, incredible. <laughs> Lenny Cool Dick Denver says, using the word emulation broadly here, but I installed an ODE, optical drive emulator, into a GameCube that also has HDMI output. Excuse me, paired with a retro tank 4K and my old memory card from over 20 years ago. Finally able to beat F Zero GX's story mode on the hardest difficulty. If so hard as fuck. Yeah, that is a hard game. Yo, Jeff, that reminds me, you even told me we had that breaking news and I completely forgot to bring it up during the show. Hey, there's a new NSO game. Oh, oh no. what is it? And how can it relate to what we're talking about here? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's funny, I forgot this. Uh F Zero Maximum Velocity is coming to Nintendo Switch Online on uh March 29th. So 29th. Just a few days. Yeah. This is the first of three F Zero games on the Game Boy Advance. This was launch title. I mean, I, I like this game. I'm not like, you know, it, it's this is here. It's a little weird. 
this is the oh, we're only getting this one uh, Game Boy Advance game when there's still a lot of Game Boy Advance games we need to add to this service. So I'm a little bit like we're, we're getting one and then we're going to have to wait like another month here. What's, why is it slowing down to a crawl? And, you know, like F-Zero, if I want to play F-Zero, I could play F-Zero 99 or F-Zero X on my Switch, really. So I don't I'm not, like mad about this, but I'm a little mad about it. Yeah, I, I, I um. I definitely played Maximum Velocity, and there's probably some reasons I haven't gone back to it. I, it do, doesn't move the needle for me all that much. And you're right. These days, for me, F-Zero is F-Zero 99, and then GX. GX, or even, yeah, even X, like X, which we have on Switch. Sure. It's very good, and, you know, a rare 60 FPS Nintendo 64 game. Always be clothing, says, hello, Jeff. Shoot five-figure parlay grub and Mike Twitch partner money Minotti. Y'all won't trick me. I ain't about to snitch. Oh, no. Nintendo emitters, Nintendo jail gang gang. <laughs> gang gang. Thank you. Uh, thank you always. It was great seeing you again. Yeah, I, uh, I, got some, I got some of the gibbets on my Crocs right now. There, there, there they are. Go. There they are. Check it out. Hell, yeah. My kids stole all the rest. Yeah, of course. Oh, good Kirby ones. Uh, Velocity Prime said, big law on this topic, <laughs> but it was in the wild and wooly days of the mid-2000s when me and my friend tried to play Mario 64 on an ancient laptop and immediately fried the thing. <laughs> really, it's incredible how much better and easier emulation is now. Yeah, we've come I, a long way. It's both. It's surprising how good it was in the 90s, really. Yeah. It should not have been as good, and it's amazing how smooth it is now, for sure. Alex says, as a kid, I found a physical GBA copy of Pokemon Chaos Black Edition in elementary school. <laughs> it couldn't save. This was before the DS. ROM hacks introduced me to a whole new world that was best on a PSP. Oh, yeah. Lots of things you can do in a PSP. Yep. Other than play PSP games. Beef Hammer says, playing Link Between Worlds on Citra with a texture pack and boosting the resolution from the native 2240p was just ah. Uh, um Oh, man, I didn't realize there was a resolution or a texture pack for that. That's interesting. There's like tetra, tex, Tetris packs. There are texture packs for a lot of these games. Uh, I actually am subscribed to a Patreon of someone who puts out new 4K texture packs for a bunch of games that run on Dolphin. And he puts out like a new one every week, basically. So, yeah, this is really cool. Matt, out in the rare wild, says, probably playing through Chrono Trigger in college as I hadn't owned an SNES yet. Hey, that game still rocks, even though college was 20 years ago. Yeah, I bet I bet so many people like me, like Matt, like others mentioned, played Chrono Trigger first on emulation. Yep, I think that I bet that's one of the most first time played on emulating games that there is. Buffy Cloud Gamer says, I played Rhythm Heaven Fever for the first time last year through Dolphin, becoming one of my favorite games ever. Ended up being gifted a hard copy to play on my Wii and realized that the input lag is real bad. Decided emulator is the way to play that game at this <laughs> point. I, yeah, it depends on how you're playing that Wii, too. If you're playing it on a modern TV and not a um, a CRT, yes, definitely. Rebirth Wolf 5 says, playing Pokemon ROM hacks, randomizers, and fan games was basically all my gaming time for a number of years. I played almost all of the most popular ones back then. Pokemon Ash Gray, Pokemon Snakewood. Pokemon my ass version, don't ask, it was bad. I wish more games had as robust a ROM hack community as the Pokemon community. I, I never played any of these myself. Yeah, and I, and I wish Nintendo wasn't in their, one of their weird periods where they're like, well, we don't want you guys playing that stuff on content. Because I would definitely be like, okay, what is the Pokemon ROM hack that I should play on Giant Bomb? Uh, and frankly, it might anyhow, since we're already in Nintendo jail. But um, yeah. it's funny. Like, what are they, I was like, like if they yelled at us, it'd be like, well, what do you want? <laughs> right. I mean, like, they, what, they, what is it? they wouldn't. Yeah, they would actually probably do a takedown or something. We can't get we can't they do that. Their finger. So, you know, Tommy Pencil says Breath of the Wild at 60 FPS was pretty, pretty good. I bet it was. I bet it was. Yeah. Seeing that is is really amazing. Um, do, do, Putting a lot of the extra mods in there as well. is just a really cool thing to do. And GC says playing the Japanese version of Pokemon Gold Slash Silver before the U.S. release and thinking I had broken all laws of time and space. Hey, just uh, like me. That's incredible. It's incredible. Hey, Jeff, how does your throat feel? Not great. I mean, it's... I'll continue. I'll keep going, Jeff, buddy. Oh, oh, Don't oh, worry. oh no, no. I, it's good enough. I, no, listen. you're already guilted me. It's too late. Let's That's go. not what I was trying to do. I was just like, you know, but it's the normal kind of bad. Let me take over, no, please. I'm carrying this cross to the end. Oh, my God. All right. That's fine. Hey, hey nope. Mike, you're out. Uh, Chef, you're in. Thank Who's you. It? All right. Coach yeah. is making the call. Okay, Coach fair enough. We are on low roll, right? We're on low roll. Yes, low, thank you, Chef. Yeah, no problem. Low roll says playing Super Metroid on Switch Online and realizing that 2D Metroid is perfect enough to go back and marathon all of the other Metroid games on emulation. That's right. I, there was the thing where it's like 
man, all these a lot of these other Metroid games are hard to play when Super Metroid came to Switch, I think. I remember people like talking right. about that. And like be like, oh, if you, if you have a Wii U, it's pretty easy, but otherwise it's kind of difficult. So yeah, just go and emulate it. That was a good call. Can't believe still don't have zero mission. What the hell? On yep. SO. That's the one where we always say that was announced, but it wasn't, right? That's not Yeah, I always been... I think it was. Right, me no. too. Yeah. And but yeah, it has not been. Uh, Adam Juice says, my favorite emulation memory was playing Fire Emblem, the Sacred Stones on GBA. We had two computers in our computer room, the good one, and an old beater computer left over after we upgraded the good one. And when it wasn't my turn on the good one, I had to make do. I was forced to use a floppy disk to get the emulator and files onto it because it had no internet access or USB drives. Hell yeah. That's the, that, those are the dark days, and I, I love those days. Um, Chaos Buckaroo says, I played GBA Fire, uh, Fire Emblem over the course of my last semester of law school. My classmates got invested watching me play to the point they would get upset if I progressed during a different <laughs> class. I can't tell you anything about the securities, but I can, I can tell you Nino is best girl. Hell yes, Chaos Buckaroo, that's great. Um, I, Fire Emblem, uh, the, some of these Fire Emblem games are actually probably also in the top 10 of most emulated games because well, these were like hard to get a get and, and people would play like the um the gamecube one or whatever i think on emulation a lot too oh yeah and like right now like the the gamecube and the wii one are very expensive and right. yeah, there's a bunch of them we never got here and i assume they pretty much all have fan translations all those so. snes ones yep and that other game boy advance one we didn't even get right right that definitely is a fan translation clink says like all good people, I spent a weekend figuring out how to get Dolphin running to play a modified, <laughs> modified version of Xenoblade Chronicles. I proceeded, proceeded to play it for 10 minutes and then didn't touch it again until the Switch remaster. Yeah. That's, good. What, a, what a good boy. That's how it goes. Uh, Cryorsis says, early 2000s, jumping into emulations to check out masterpieces I missed out on. Played a fair bit of Super Metroid while loading videos on new grounds. Uh, when the baby attacked M Mother Brain at the end of the game, a video had just loaded, and all I could hear is the dancing bana bana banana peanut butter jelly song. Pretty sure I laughed so hard I may have pissed myself. Super Metroid does rule. Man, I, I, when I... Did that final boss in Super Metroid just on Z Snes or whatever that first time on a computer? I was like, that final boss, I was like, this is the greatest thing that's ever happened in the video oh. game. I was like, this is <laughs> amazing. Uh, Shoji Kodo says, I re remember back in the early to mid 2000s. I was hit with such a massive wave of nostalgia and feelings the first time I was able to replay Super Mario RPG via emulation in college. This was after not having played it for close to a decade since it originally came out on Super Nintendo, so I was able to fall in love with it all over again. have played it that way every couple of years or so since. Yeah, that's one I've definitely emulated a whole bunch of times in a whole bunch of different places at this point. Um, I just love going back to that game. Warden Cliff says, I'll never forget playing through Mother 3 on my college laptop when the fan translation came out. Yeah, but that's a popular one as well. In fact, I know yeah, it's a popular my, one. Of course, over here, right? Yeah. yeah. It is. Yeah. Someday. Someday. Uh, this year. I'll, I'll do it this year. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not committing. I committed to an earthbound run like two years ago. That just never no, happened. That's, that I'm on that arc it. right now. So there we are. Uh, Screaming Madden says, my favorite Nintendo emulation memory came from one night where after I watched a college football game in person where the Auburn Tigers beat the LSU Tigers, my brother and I got back to his college apartment, turned on the Wii, and I played Punch Out on Virtual Console and got as far as beating Great Tiger. Well, there you go. You know, tiger filled night. We got a lot of tigers in this episode. Some are fucking, some are getting beaten up. It's a hell of a night for tigers. Uh, Willow David. <laughs> <laughs> Stick with me, Mike. We're going to make through it. Uh, well, you're doing great. I love, that was funny. It's a, you're a funny guy. Uh huh. Willow Davis uh, has a, 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 a gif here of. Mega Man from Mega Man Legends, I presume, all smoothed oh, out in Super Mario sixty four. Okay, right, there he goes. What the Obviously, fuck is wrong with you, Mega I, Man yeah. X? You stupid idiot! Okay, there it is. Ass, Mike. Okay, what a fucking moron! I, uh. I take back what I said about you being funny. <laughs> Cool. Jamie H. He Christmas it looks Eve. looks like Mega Man Vote Nut. <laughs> uh, I mean, listen, I knew he looked different. I said smoothed out because I knew he looked different. <laughs> that much I did now. I I could see he's got the red on the helmet now. Whatever. That's right. Jamie H. He's Christmas Eve. He's got angry Eve. anime eyes. Come on. Oh, okay. That should have given it away. Uh, he does pop out of a pipe in Super Mario 64, and that is what I was focused on, to be fair. <laughs> so, hey. Uh, I do um, like the idea of, of hacking characters into other games. I, sure. I, I don't do it too often, 
Um, but I always like when I do play one of these weird old Chinese handhelds or one of these Chinese hand handhelds and it has like a bunch of ROMs. It's like Super Mario Brothers 7 and you play it and it is like Mega Man going through Super Mario Brothers 3 or something. Um, I like that. That's always a fun thing. Uh, Jamie H. Christmas Eve says, replaying Spirit Tracks and Phantom Hourglass with the D-pad patch on my Retroid uh. Pocket, aiming to finally hack my 3DS this week and play Majora's Mask that way. The only mainline Zelda I've never finished. Um, yeah, I, I people were talking about that recently. Uh, there was a, like a, a Good Morning Games, or whatever, I can't remember what their name of their channel is, Good Vibe Gaming or something like that. They did a whole bunch of games that like have been hacked on the 3DS or, or DS uh, where you could play things with a, a D-pad instead of the touch controls. I'm like, man, that stuff sounds like a good idea for a lot of those games that I missed out on otherwise. Yeah, absolutely. Shoot Hot American Summer says, I had never encountered Picross as a game or a concept until Mario's Super Picross for Super Nintendo showed up on the Switch. The Nintendo Switch Online version doesn't have any English localization at all, so I did my best to try to figure out the rules through trial and error. I got through about 10 puzzles without understanding how the numbers actually worked until I got to the more complex puzzles that I couldn't solve. Turns out Nintendo's YouTube channel has a quick video that explains the rules in English quite nicely. Since then, I play a little bit of Picross nearly every night before bed. I played through the entirety of Mario's Super Picross and the Wario levels on Nintendo Switch Online, my phone, and Analog Pocket. Um, hey, check out Picross 3D next if you're, if you're into that concept. It's very, very good. Pseudo Gerudo says, virtual console. Cop. <laughs> Dr. Ryan says, my dad asked me why there was an icon of a ball sack on my computer screen. <laughs> and me having to say, no, dad, that's called Nesticle. And I can play NES games with it. Then he just said, okay, and walked away. Hell yeah. yeah. We've all had that experience. Yeah, pretty much. Laser Wolf says, What's, when smartphones uh, first came out playing Pokemon Blue on my rooted HTC phone, kids these days will never understand the Wild West that was the first smartphones. Yeah, they were wild. Yep. Uh, iPhone is getting better about like allowing emulators, I think I heard. Um, but man, yeah, I, I kind of always have that stuff installed on Android and kind of never use it. Um, Wong Gifts says, growing up in the UK, we didn't get Final Fantasy 1 through 6 until fairly late in the PS1 life cycle. Right. So these right. were only available to me via emulator for the longest time. Great memories of playing six, especially, but also trying to struggle through the opening of five in Japanese. Seemed magical that I could finally play these. Yeah, man, I bet. Yeah, if you're in the UK, it's a, it's wild how little Final Fantasy they got for a very long time. Dr. Lynch says, bought an Ouya to do nothing but emulate on it. Spent weeks while decompressing at the end of my PhD playing Diddy Kong Racing with Friends. Glor glorious that game still owns yeah Ouya was kind of like an, an early bad steam deck like right. where, you got it it could do all these things and people were emulating on it uh and it wasn't it just wasn't great bayleaf moon says as someone who is learning japanese and has dirty australian consoles that are region locked having emulators just work straight away with japanese games was slash is quite magical yeah i bet that's pretty handy uh, Cerebus Kane says, playing the Nightmare on Elm Street NES game on Nesticle during computer class in high school, noticing the teacher walking towards me and frantically fumbling to minimize the emulator, managing to do so uh, 0 0.01 seconds before she looked at the screen. Yeah, I, I definitely was doing some emulation in uh, my study halls and newspaper classes and stuff like that. Too. Oh, yeah. Getting that stuff installed on school computers always felt like the coolest thing. Um, and then I would play Super Mario Brothers for like 10 minutes. Uh, RT Bix says, I self-medicated the night of the 2020 presidential election by emulating Ocarina of Time for the N64. Yep. Uh, Super Harmon says, emulation was the first way I played Pokemon. My housemate installed a GB emulator and Pokemon Red on my PC in 2000, and I spent a lot of time with it. So much that when gold slash silver came out, I bought a Game Boy Color with gold. Yeah, God, that's right. They were emulating because Game Boy had been around for so long at that point. Like oh, yeah. An emulator was definitely already going. I bet a lot of people first played Pokemon that way. T-Money OG says, my best friend and I would emu emulate Super Nintendo beat-em-ups on his family computer. One of us was on WASD, and the other used the arrow keys. Ah. We played a lot of Turtles in Time, Sunset Riders, and King of Dragons. That's a great time That's right there. That's a good there. setup. That makes sense. That's great. I like that a lot. 
Aunt the Savs is randomly deciding to play through the entirety of Yoshi's Island on my old Android phone during high school study halls. This definitely helped me get back into more retro titles as I got older. Uh, Vision 49 says, hunched over my laptop in college, playing Chrono Trigger for the first time, using the keyboard for controls without even thinking about plugging in a controller. Yeah, that again, yeah. RPGs are a good fit for emulation on a, a device that isn't meant to play it because uh, you can kind of adapt to that pretty quickly. Right. And I'm trying to remember like when I did like some like when I did Super Metroid, if I used a controller, I remember we had a real weird PC controller that came with the PC version of Mega Man X that I used for a while for things. But we probably had some kind of early logic tech controller or something sure. at that point. Even. Yeah. Uh, Weed Hater says around 2003, 2004, my friend showed me that he downloaded every Super Nintendo game to his family computer. He fired up the emulator and launched a basketball game called Rap Jam Volume 1. I was Queen Latifah, he was LL Cool J. That game sucked ass. All right, I mean, Wait, were, sounds incredible. Were you like, I have to have every game on my library, or were you more like, oh, okay, I can curate, that's fine, or kind of I've definitely, to go? I've definitely had whims where I'm like, I'll just have everything. And then every other time it is like, no, I'm going to curate this uh, or like I'll get the torrent and I will actually spend the time to only check the games. I'm, I'm like actually going to play and maybe a few extras that look interesting or something like that. But I don't want to have 2000 games. I want to have about 150 games. That That's the sweet spot for sure. me. Yeah, I agree. Uh, DMC depressed me crying says the Wii was the first console my family ever had. My little brother and I spent many, many hours in Mario Kart Wii. We live across the country now. When we when he visited this last Christmas, we spent a bunch of time playing Mario Kart Wii custom tracks from my laptop hooked up to the TV. Yeah, nice. that's that's a good time right there. I've um, definitely done some stuff like that where it's like, let's just uh, play some old Wii games as a party game when we, since we have a whole bunch of family over and I'll just do this with my laptop and I found a sensor bar or whatever i had a, actually no i bought a wireless sensor bar and put a battery in it just put that by the tv and that worked really well big tony the final fantasy guy says my dogs it's been almost 20 years when i first or since i first discovered emulation when i hacked my psp in high school playing the nes super nintendo game boy game boy color game boy advance along with the psp library was amazing for 16 year old me that sounds like a Sounds like a good time. I was like, you, you did, this is one of the young people stories that doesn't even make me feel mad. I'm like, man, that sounds like a good time to be oh, in high absolutely. school. Absolutely, You can catch up with, with just a PSP. You could catch up on a, a lot of gaming. Yes, exactly. It, it really was a great device for that, for sure. Op, uh, Epic Open World says, hey, Jeff, how many Chinese handhelds can I buy with $10,000 grub? And Mike, what is the fanciest restaurant I can unbox Lorcana cards in? Minotti. Um, he definitely unboxed him in a pretty fancy restaurant. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Not Nintendo, but I am old and remember my friend's older brother installing a whole shit ton of arcade game emulators on my family's 386 computer. No idea they were emulators, and he made us criminals. Yeah. Wow. 386. That's really crime. And that's, a, that's an early computer, too. I did, not, I did not realize, like, MAME and arcade emulators were running on 386 computers at that time. That's wild. Um, Tink says, for me... It's playing through a translated Mother 3 when that patch first dropped. Amazing game. Second place is the Nesticle icon and Mouse Pointer being hilariously dumb. It, is that cool a thing anymore? Not really, I, don't I think imagine. So. I don't think so, That's no. Bad. It's a shame, yeah. We, we, we lose our history, slowly but surely. Yeah. Uh, Caleb L. says, My earliest memories were using Z, a Zenusness. Way There's back, Z-Snes. Yep, way back when that, that was the only notable Super Nintendo emulator around. Hard to believe that was about 20 years ago yeah, now. That's when I was doing it, yeah. And, uh, you know, Z SNES was actually pretty good. And it's like these days, uh, there's B SNES, which is, it has a bunch of different varieties it comes in. And you can get, like, perfect emulation. You can get HD emulation. All kinds of fun stuff with B SNES. So, good times. Uh, finally, Turbo Sean says, my last Wind Waker playthrough, where uh, Crystal apparently has replaced Link in the legend of zelda wind waker a true a crime a true crime it's against a, uh humanity i love here. to whack off to crystal <laughs> <laughs> pretty good looking uh crystal model though i have to admit oh yeah yeah it's uh kind of looks like an evolution of the n64 dinosaur planet crystal yeah uh, it looks more like dinosaur planet crystal 
Oh yeah, <laughs> that's what it is. It's a real mod where they recreate that model and then, uh, put that in, and then all of her voice lines as well. And it looks really cute, actually. I like it a lot. Yeah, she looks way more wholesome in Nintendo sixty four than what they did to her on GameCube. <laughs> uh, and then Christian says, "Right to fucking jail." He yeah. caught us, everybody. He's been oh, no. he's been a, a, a sleep agent this whole time, waiting for us. He's hey, actually a cop. Hate it, cops? <laughs> yep, that's how we should have known. We should have known. Uh, all right, Mikey, that does it for you, our community's input on emulation memories. Why don't we take one more break? We got a bunch more super chats. Some of these related to uh, emulation memories. Uh, then we'll we'll wrap up the show here. Let's do that. Sounds good. Going to the break. There we go. Good break. I play a lot of uh, King of Fighter on uh, Neo Rage X. That shit was fucking raw. Oh, yeah. I should uh, play play King of Fighter on keyboard. I gotta get my you should have Steam the keyboard with your homie. Back up and going with all the emulation stuff. Most of it's working, but I want to get all the arcade stuff going. I want to play some old arcade games. Uh, where are we at? With I'm ready to get right. Let me just get in the right place with right. the super okay, chat, sure, and then I'll be sure, good. Sure. Uh, I think we did that one. The penis one. We did the penis one. Okay. I'm good. Yes. Oh, uh, no. I never. No, I don't know that. Seraphine, sorry. All right. Is that I'm, another Neo Geo? Uh, bring us back in whenever you are ready, Let's Mike. Let's go. Yeah. All right. We are back. Uh, Jeff, I think we have some more super chats now. I think a lot of people wanted to share their uh, emulation thoughts also and other things. Yeah, so uh, let's start here with Big Fresh 37. There's only one entry on the speedrun chart for Captain Toad and Co op. You two could be on there. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that, uh, what a dream, huh, Jeff? There it is. I mean, listen, eventually at some point it has to happen, right, Big Fresh? Uh, I will admit, I have bought Captain Toad's treasure tracker. <gasps> yes. <laughs> I've done it. Uh, yes, that's the right reaction. Um, mostly, mostly because Addy was like, "I want more games for me that you think I might like," and I got her. I had Katamari, and no, Katamari was on sale, so I bought both Katamari games that are on the Switch. And then um, I don't know something else now. I can't remember. Oh, Minecraft. I'm like, maybe it's time. Maybe it's time to let yeah, her play Minecraft. It's time. And then uh, I got uh, uh, Captain Toad. I'm like, eh, you know, maybe I could play some of this when she's not playing the Switch these days. So um, I am one step closer, Big Fresh. Keep at it. Uh, Aramis Baramus says, found out you could put the Pokemon Game Boy Color games on a TI Inspire CS calculator in high school. Wow. No sound, but easily playable in class. Good times. That's, um, TI-83 would not have been able to work with that. Um, but I do yeah. know that those TIs got way more powerful than them. Because, like, the TI-83 is legit from, like, the 80s. And they just kept making it and selling it for $100 because it was, like, required for school. It's a real yeah, racket. government stuff. Yeah, yeah. I do remember that we basically had, we had, like, a Mario game on there that was basically Mario Land that we played a lot. But, like, not emulation. It was, like, recreated in there. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that, that's cool. If you got to use one of those better TIs and you got to actually play Pokemon on there, that sounds fantastic. But I'll stick with Drug Wars. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, Annie for Prez says, until Vanillaware brings their stuff to PC, I'm going to be staring at them oversized pecs and asses through less than legal means. Also, game go. preservation FTW for the win. It is just weird that those Vanillaware games aren't available on more platforms, uh, especially uh, Switch. And apparently, uh, because of Vanillaware's preferences, like the... the um, who published the last game was it atlas that published uh yeah, atlas at 13 sentinels i think right and they, they did unicorn overlord right and they're like hey oh. talk to vanilla or that when we tried to put it on pcs they said no and it's like wait what why weird yeah, yeah weird funny apparently they apparently they, they're, they're console heathens i guess uh burrito said my first emulator experience was the japanese version of Mega Man and bass it's a bass or bass uh, a, a bass. It's all music metaphors. Right. Okay. Mega that's Man. what I was. That, that's what I thought. Mega Man and bass, circa ninety eight slash ninety nine on Windows ninety eight on the legendary SNES nine X. My friend had to install the three megabyte ROM across three floppy disks. Bass still rules. Um, uh, bass. Um, bass. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I uh, actually I had a similar experience because you know how much I love Mega Man and just finding out that there was. Uh, this Mega Man game that we just didn't get over here drove me crazy. That had an English patch pretty early on. So, yeah, I played through that before the Game Boy Advance version came out, which finally did let us play it, albeit with a terrible resolution. So, yeah, having a Rockman and bass was a, a very, very big one. Actually, it was Rockman and Forte, Mega Forte, Man and bass. Right. That's right. Yeah, Forte in Japan. 
Uh, Andrew G joined the Lincoln tier. Thank you so much, Andrew G. And then he followed up with a super chat saying, today is my 37th birthday. So I'm showing you all some love. Can I get hey. some HBDs in chat for Andrew nice. G? Let's make that I happen, am, everybody. Happy birthday, I Andrew. 37 myself. That's a good age. Thank you so much, Andrew. Uh, I missed it when me and Bacalar were the same age for like a day and a half. That was really yeah, special. That was, cute. It was pretty special to me. Uh, Joshua Prudhomme. Also joined the Lincoln tier. Thank you so much, Josh. I appreciate that. If you, and feel free, everybody, to drink, join the, the 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 Lincoln tier, whatever tier you want here on YouTube. That does get you access to the to the Discord and all that good stuff. So feel free to do that if you want. Uh, let's see, uh, Doctor Ryan. Uh, oh no, actually, let's see here. Oh, that was Andrew G. Gifting one Games Mess a membership. Actually, oh, thank so you, again, thank you, Andrew. Thank you so much, Andrew G. Really showing the love again. Happy birthday. Dr. Ryan says, Zines, Bines, what about penis? What about penis? What about penis? What Dr. About Ryan love? has a good point there. What about love and penis? Uh, Dibbity Dab says, I put the whole NES, SNES, GB, etc. libraries on my analog pocket. My three-year-old and, three and I have been having so much fun playing through all the Sesame Street and Mickey Mouse games with the doc on the TV. That nice. sounds like a good way to do things, yeah. And you can... um. Yeah easily fit that entire library of those games on an sd card and still have plenty of space to spare so good call input video here says hey jeff your community finance guy here to remind you to set aside 24 percent of your winnings for fed taxes and to report it as income on your state taxes yeah they are withholding the taxes for me uh so i actually did not take home ten thousand dollars i took home somewhere yeah. somewhere closer to 7500 yeah i'm not complaining it's, it's, it's nice that they did it exactly I, um... convenient my, my taxes are way more complicated this year because of, uh, you know, there's Game S LLC and then uh, what I give from Fandom now mm -hmm. and, um, and from Twitch. So, you know, it's great. It's great having all the extra income, but that stuff is not taxed up front. So it is a bit more of a pain filing my taxes now. And it's not as much fun. You know, you used to get a little return, like, ooh, so yep. free money, right? Like, even though it's not, but it feels like, ooh, now it's like, no, I got to give them money. Yep. I, I've, I've had to pay for the last several years, even though I got the kids and all that stuff. Still had to pay. Yeah. Uh, last one the here one from Fergus, uh, currently in line for Mario Kart at Universal Studios Japan. Nice. Hope all is good. Hope all is well with you guys, Fergus. That's amazing. I hope you have yeah. a good time. Enjoy have yourself fun. in Japan at Universal Studios. Isn't uh, that like I like I know it's like it should be easy stuff. That's kind of crazy. Me if somebody's just in Japan right now and just listening to us live. Yeah, I, I, that means a lot to me that someone's like, "Hey, I'm experiencing this thing and I still want to be part of the podcast and listen to it." So That's cool. Thank you so much, Fergus. Really appreciate it. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, real, but hey, enjoy yourself absolutely, and um, give us a report on the merch. Let me know if there's any cool new merch. I would like to see if they've upgraded since, since we went last time. All right, uh, that does it for the super chats, Mikey. Uh, Jeff, you know, I, I didn't play my Switch pretty much at all. Once again, it's a I brought the Switch on a trip and then yeah. didn't use it. Just too busy or too tired. But um, on the show floor, I did play a couple games that are going to be on Switch. Uh, the one I want to talk about is the Transylvania Adventure of Simon Oh, you, you did play that. Okay, I'm glad. All right, what'd you think? It's, you know, so for people who don't know, you can probably tell from the name. This is a, a Castlevania clone, and it is wearing that. On the sleeve, we've had some other ones of these that have been very good. Uh, most notably, uh, uh, a blood. Oh gosh, what's that? What is that one called? Maybe Bloodstain. 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 Curse of the Moon. One and two. Yeah, they're very good. They're very specifically doing a Castlevania three thing. This is much more Castlevania one, a little bit simpler, but just one hundred percent replicating that feel. The graphics, the controls, maybe a little too much because you still have to like do up and attack to use your sub weapon. Sure. I'm like, I'm like, guys, we have all these other buttons here. <laughs> uh, maybe in the maybe in the the real game you can keep buying that. I would hope so. Um, the one big difference was that instead of like picking up sub weapons, I just had all of them and I can switch between them whenever, which is interesting. That the problem is like, oh, I'm just going to use the cross then, I guess uh, every time because that's usually the best one. And there's a neat thing where if I hit the cross of my whip, I could actually kind of boomerang it a bit. But yeah, you know, I love classic Castlevania, and this just was classic Castlevania. So hey, I'll take it all day long. Yeah, I uh, I like the look of this. Um, it did like stump me for like ten, not ten seconds, but like five seconds. I was looking, at it, I'm like, Simon Quest. That's not the name. What the fuck's happening here? <laughs> and, then, and then it was like, oh, someone's riffing on that. Of course they are. And that that's a great idea. And so I got excited, and then I wasn't like going to wait in line of you know places to be. I'm an important man, um, but I am glad that you played it. I'm excited to actually get my hands on it once it's out, though. That sounds fun. Yeah. 
Uh, but how about you? Anything you play? Um, no, uh, traveling didn't really play much of the Switch. Um, I, I mean, I suppose that I did, you know, get these things up and running for for Addy on the Switch. So did check out Minecraft, and I forgot about. Oh yeah, that that Super Mario Minecraft stuff, which I think I started oh, yeah. on the Wii U forever ago. We've been messing around with that. It's actually still really cute and cool. I like that a lot. Um, but no, I, you know, honestly, I just was like, hey, I'm, I had fun playing those games uh, in Dandoko Dare. Uh, it was fun to like go back to Donkey Kong Jr. and be like, oh man, this game is kind of bullshit, but I really still enjoy it and like the way it feels. Um, and trying to like just uh, the, the hard thing for me in Dan Doko Dare, Mike, was remembering all the goals at the same time while yeah. I was doing it. And I was like, kind of like stumbling forward, like, I know I can get 100 coins, but I'm like, oh, yeah, the thing with the Goombas. And I'd, I'd stomp on a Goomba, be like, oh, that was only one Goomba. I got to hit two Goombas. I should even try that. That's kind of like a really lucky thing, like if I would even pull that off. So I have to, like, forget about that. And I'm like, okay, what was I doing? Oh, yeah, 100 coins, but what else could I be doing? And then I get to the end of a stage, and I'd be like, okay, well, if we get to this next one, and then I'd forget to get the fireworks. So it was hard to, like, keep all that stuff in my head, but I, I still really like the format. And in the end, it was like, I got oh. lucky. I got fireworks without even trying for it. I'm a piece of shit. No, it's, I mean, th that happens sometimes, but uh, it's like, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think I got like eight, you got nine. And I like, that was a fun race. I had a good time with that stuff. People should go watch that. Yeah, I'd love to do something like that again. But Burrito's right. When are we uh, doing the hentai golf stream? I will. I'll play hentai golf on this this pit channel for sure. <laughs> yeah, why not? Not on giant bomb. Well, I, 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 let me see if it's even allowed on Twitch, uh, and then we'll see. But, I mean, there, it's, not, it's not like there's going to be tits in it or nipples, right? Just, I don't. I don't think so. Right. Um. I don't. I well. I know wanna, Nintendo has allowed. Though? What's that? You want to risk it though? That's uh, that's, uh, that's a. I high listen. Humble. If it's not on the list, it's allowed. All right. It is something called hentai golf, though. I, I have not touched. I deleted it because as soon as I came home, Addy's like, switch, please. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, sure, thing. And so I had to do a thing where I, like, angled yeah. it away from her and, like, how do I get rid of this? I tried to archive it, but that doesn't get rid of the icon. So I'm like, delete? And I deleted it, and that actually made it go away. So I'll have, to, I'll have to re-download it, everybody. Sorry. Oh, you, I don't think that'll take you got, long. You need a <laughs> switch, especially just for, yeah, you just need a switch just for that game. I know. They need to yeah. get on that family sharing that the Steam Deck has now. Um, yeah. um, we got one more super chat. Hey, more thumbs up, by the way, please. Uh, we, we got one more super chat. Yeah, I'm going to read this right now. Chris Quinton says, I just bought a Switch OLED after not touching Nintendo games since Gua uh, Guacam... You say Guacube? Guacube? Since the Guacamelee Cube. It's right to be clear, everybody. <laughs> since the GameCube. Listen, I'm kind of far <laughs> away and I'm old. Uh, what are some <laughs> games to try that's not the main ones? Already bought Metroid Dread. Kirby in the Forgotten Land, and several Marios and Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Yeah. All uh, right. Definitely don't forget about Luigi's Mansion 3. It's kind of one of the main ones, but it is incredible. Uh, if you have not played, uh, you know, you, you bought Metroid Dreads. I assume you like Metroidvanias. If you haven't played uh, The Lost Crown, uh, do that. Jeff, um, Jan was talking about some some other new uh, Metroidvania coming out. I'm excited. But he said, like, like, oh, the movement in this makes, uh, like, like it's actually, like, significantly better than The Lost Crown. And I, I want that to make me excited, but it mostly just makes me not believe Jan. Yeah, I There's mean, no listen, well, well, we don't, like, Jan did not like Prince of Persia as much as us. So, not quite as much as us, that's true. So I, I wonder if, like, that, that's informing his opinion there. At the very least, I, I mean, I look at that game. It looks like it's got some pretty slick movement. If it's anywhere close to Prince of Persia, I'll be very happy. It's even just close. Yes. Uh, I like the Live a Live or Live a Live remake quite a lot on Switch. If you're looking for a kind of a cool, if, you're, if you want to play one of those HD 2D RPGs, uh, I like that one a lot. A lot of people do like Octopath 2, which might be worth checking out. Also, if you're in the mood for one of those. Um, uh, is is up, the Jeff? reason you brought up Prince of Persia because you said Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown? Because they, they, uh, they should play that. Play play, play Pikmin 4. Yes, that's why. Yeah. Uh, Hades. If you haven't played Hades before, Hades, Hades of course. especially on that Celeste. OLED, it's a mwah. Uh, you know, other indie games, oh. Stardew Valley, stuff like that. Yeah, if you want a good OLED game, get try Tetris Effect. Oh, sure. oh, yes. Tetris Effect Super Mario RPG Remake is a great one. Link's Awakening is a great one. Uh, Pokemon Legends Arceus is the like really interesting Pokemon game. You can have a good time with yeah, that. There are so many Switch games. It's 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 like hard. You like, can kind of just throw a, while. a dart at a dartboard, and you're gonna find something worth checking out. Or I guess Captain Toad Treasure Tracker. 
Uh, there Nick, you go. Why not? Nick asked, if I, oh, you didn't like that? Nick, I just haven't really played it. I liked the segments I played in Super Mario 3D World a ton, though. And at the end of that game, was like, I kind of got my fill. I don't really need the game, but I'm going to play it. I don't care. Yep. I'll do yep. it. Mike, that's um, it. I think that's it, Ed. I think we I think got all it. our I'm, super chats. I'll hit the button. I yelled at people to give us more. Oh, you need six more. Thumbs up, everybody. Everybody do it now. In fact, I'm not playing the music till it happens. Oh, shit. Chance of Scenario. That's a good one. Play that on the uh, Switch. Into the bridge. We'll just, we'll just name good Nintendo Switch games. Uh, the Ori games are on there. Uh, Mar Dude, and, um, Mario Party Superstars, not Super Mario Party. No. Mario Party Superstars specifically. Smash Brothers. You should have... Uh, you playing Smash Brothers? That's like I like Smash Brothers. That's a Dead good game. Cells. I'm a big fan oh, of Dead Cells. Now. All right, thank you so much, everybody. Really appreciate it. you. Can start hitting that music. I did. There you go. We got Blight Club tomorrow. More Super Dance 64. It's, man, it feels like way more than a week ago since the last one because we had that giant Boston trip, right? Yes, right. I mean, it doesn't even feel like we skipped, uh, um, you know, the sides, which we did. Feels like we just did an episode. So yeah. If you did at the uh, Beast Cast reunion, uh, Alex Navarro announced Dance next to light club games so like we are full steam ahead there we got uh now he's not gonna play those games right after this there's gonna be a cycle so after he finishes super dan you'll play a game i'll play a game then dan will play these two games which are terminator 3 for ps2 and drake of the 99 dragons for the xbox drake of the 99 dragons especially well known as one of the worst games ever yeah and i think i think terminator is a little bit shorter so that's a good uh, uh, two for right there Appetizer. Yes, exactly. Appetizer. I am excited. Yeah, get Celeste too. That's a good one. Oh, Crucible Blast! <laughs> what made you think of that? <laughs> Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's great thing, Mike. And blessing, and all sorts of people. I don't get so horny. I stay horny. Edge. It's so frustrating when the game makes you edge. The music. <laughs> you recognize it immediately now. Uh -huh.